I am important. I'm the CEO of XPW, and that, my friend, speaks volumes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grapple Vision. I'm Vamp, and today we'll be taking a look at XPW, a bit of their history, as well as a look at the owner, Rob Black. Extreme Pro Wrestling was a hardcore wrestling promotion founded in 1999 by Rob Zakari, better known by his work name, Rob Black. The promotion featured many violent matches, as it is common in hardcore wrestling, and had many storylines featuring porn stars, alternative lifestyles, profanity, and what can only be described as sadistic violence. The promotion was by many standards controversial, to say the least. Black, who owned adult film company Extreme Associates, was originally going to invest in and become a West Coast promoter for Extreme Championship Wrestling. But this fell through due to ECW attempting to secure a cable deal to air their program, feeling that having an adult film company involved would hinder their attempts at doing this. XPW was born out of this, and ECW became one of their biggest rivals. Though the promotions were located on opposite sides of the country, due to the nature of their promotions, they had a lot of wrestlers from ECW come through their locker room. In the summer of 2000, ECW was to host their annual pay-per-view event, Heatwave, in Los Angeles, California. Security that day was fairly tight, and they were searching all fans for pro XPW merchandise, signs, and even just black signs. Doc Marley, who previously worked with XPW, was helping security identify anyone affiliated with the rival promotion. Though those identified were still permitted entrance to the venue, they were, however, required to turn their XPW t-shirts inside out. Rob Black purchased six front row tickets for XPW members Messiah, Christy Miss, Supreme, Homeless Jimmy, Kid Chaos, and Chris Kloss. Most ECW fans didn't know who any of them were, though some did. Miss did attract a lot of attention from fans, though, due to how she was dressed. But from accounts, the XPW members were actually very well behaved throughout most of the show, posing for photos, signing autographs, and were very friendly with security. There were also members of the XPW ring crew that night that were scattered throughout the building. Black claimed the entire reason for the talent to even be at the ECW show that night was to sit in the front row, put on their XPW shirts, cause a little disturbance to get on camera, and garner some publicity for his promotion. The main event for the evening was to be Tommy Dreamer with Francine versus Just Incredible with Jazz and George. Fans started to chant for Francine to remove her top, which Miss did instead, doing so with her back to the ring so it wasn't visible on camera. The crowd went wild, and Francine was miffed because there was a planned spot in the match for her to lose her top, and having two women do this in the same night would take the heat away. So she proceeded to yell at Mist. What happened next is a bit unclear by all accounts, as what happens is a bit hazy. It was reported that Mist and Francine got into a shoving match over their argument about the shirt spot that caused Francine to stumble and fall down. Later, it was said that security was getting physical with Supreme, who had removed his shirt reportedly to show off the XPW logo to get that on TV in case the cameras were on them. He was shoved, knocked into Mist, who fell into Francine, causing a chain reaction of what was to happen that can only be described as a all-out street fight in the parking lot. None of this was actually visible on camera though, so it just looked like a fight in the stands to regular fans. Joey Styles stated on air that the commotion was caused by a drunken fan completely no-selling XPW's presence at their show. As stated from a fan who was watching this on television, it just looked like a fight in the stands and wrestlers got involved as they thought someone had put their hands on one of their own. Tommy Dreamer can even be seen hopping onto the apron to join into the fray. Security 
kindly escorted the XPW wrestlers outside, but didn't end here. As I said before, what could only be described as a street fight, the XPW wrestlers were outnumbered by the ECW workers 3 to 1. The ECW wrestlers that were reportedly in the brawl were Jack Victory, Mikey Whipwreck, Chili Willy, Kid Cash, Danny Doring, Sal Granziano, New Jack, and even Paul Heyman allegedly hopped in. They, they pulled Francine, or they grabbed Francine, or hit Tommy, I don't know what it was, but the camera went off of them, uh, and then it moved to the parking lot, and uh, I, I was in it. I don't remember it being that long. It was almost like an old school, like, Gang of New York street fight where they didn't fare too well. Uh, I seen Roadkill and Sal, they were just dropping people, men, women, children, fucking stray dogs. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty one-sided fight. But I don't even know which workers were in the fight. I don't remember. I remember I was ECW, we ran out, and we, we kicked some ass. Reportedly, Black was furious about what transpired as he claimed the ECW boys were beating on his ring crew and not wrestlers. Though, it's not really clear how many of the six wrestlers that were even at the event were actually in the fight. It was true, however, the ring crew was. July 16th. The Heat Wave pay-per-view. We go there. Four wrestlers and the beautiful Christy Mist. They go, they sit in the front row. They sit at your pay-per-view with their XPW shirts. But they didn't wear the XPW shirts the way they wanted to because you people wouldn't let them. And a couple of the ring guys, what were they doing there? Handing out flyers in the parking lot, flyering the cars. That's what they were there. What were the wrestlers supreme and christy miss and messiah and kit cast what were they doing there they were there to show up because you're in our backyard why why paul Heyman? you could have came here a year ago but you didn't so what happens christy miss stands up she undoes her leather jacket to reveal a beautiful bikini top she's a little hot and what happens francine goes nuts that little crap goes next goes, I'm sorry, you got me so riled up, I, I, I don't know what to say anymore. She goes nuts, screams to security, security come over, our boys take off our shirts to reveal the XPW, and what happens, Paul Heyman, all your wrestlers from the locker room come out and start swinging. You, Paul Heyman, you start swinging, throw them out of the building, that's all right. You don't want them there, that's all right. But when, in the parking lot, those that lump of Big Sal, that that nobody who couldn't even be a jobber in the in the in the in the WWF or Stampede Wrestling for that matter, and you start beating up ring crew guys. You don't go after Supreme, you don't go after Messiah, you don't go after Kick Cash. You go after a couple of the 140 pound ring crew guys. That's what you do. That it makes you proud, and you're screaming in the parking lot. La, 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 XPW, hey, you my friend, you, you made it to a bigger deal than it was. And you, my friend, attacked a ring girl, one of our girls, one of our, our poor, helpless ring girls who go and do flyers and work for us for free. You struck her, she's got police charges against you. You struck a couple of our ring guys, they got police charges against you. Let me tell you something, Paul Heyman, I dare you, I dare you to come back to LA. Black had taken to the internet to post about how the XPW crew were innocent victims and threatened ECW with legal action, though this would have been pointless as ECW went out of business less than a year later. Because there is a lawsuit coming, Paul Heyman. Police charges have been filed. A lawsuit is commencing. You got a lawsuit against me. I got a lawsuit against you. Join the club. Black was also already being sued at the time by ECW's Paul Heyman over the use of Sabu. HHG Corp, AKA ECW against XPW, Extreme Professional Wrestling, against Sabu. You see, this lawsuit is also for Sabu. This lawsuit is against me and Sabu because I'm using Sabu, but Paul Heyman claims Sabu is under contract. Black's claims that ECW beat his ring crew and that the whole incident was a setup, though he intentionally sent them there in the first place. He was angry there was a physical incident, but his whole intent was obviously to start a feud between the two companies and left his employees in pools of their own blood after they were beaten by the ECW wrestlers.
William Welsh, better known by his ring name, The Messiah, started his pro wrestling career going to Slammers Wrestling Academy in Studio City, California, right after high school. Right after graduating wrestling school, Welsh wrestled for a bit in Southern California under the name Iron Mike Earnhardt. After a couple of years, he moved to Georgia and stayed there for about a year. In 1999, he moved back to SoCal and saw a commercial for XPW, a brand new promotion where he saw a lot of familiar faces from his time at Slammers and made the decision to go and reconnect with Dynamite D. Welsh debuted in November of 1999 as the Balloonatic, losing a squash match against Nicole Bass. It was later decided that Welsh would have a religious gimmick, being a moral crusader against all that was extreme at XPW. Black took that gimmick even further, deciding Welsh would be betraying Jesus Christ. Welsh hated this idea, was billed as Jesus once, and refused to be billed as such any longer. He started going by the moniker The Messiah, and quickly became one of the top stars of the promotion. Messiah rose through the ranks, beating the likes of Sabu and Supreme, eventually earning the title of King of the Deathmatch. At XPW's Damage Inc. event in August of 2001, Messiah was scheduled to be in the main event alongside Rob Black versus Josh Lazzy and Sabu, which would result in Sabu leaving XPW if his team lost. The tape was played of what was supposed to be Messiah telling Black he needed to go back to heaven though everyone in the building knew it wasn't him. Black did the match solo, and with help from Webb, was able to defeat Sabu. It was later learned that a week before the event, Black had heard about the alleged affair between his wife and valet Lizzie Borden and Messiah. Messiah, having worked for both XPW and Extreme Associates, said in an interview with SoCal Uncensored, I had to wake up the next morning just being a regular guy if you would call it that. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I also worked for Extreme Associates. So when I woke up, I was no longer part of XPW or Extreme Associates. At the time of that interview, Messiah was still denying any affair had taken place, but he later on freely admitted to it. At an epic show in 2002, fellow wrestler New Jack cut a promo on XPW and Rob Black reportedly due to Black bouncing a check to New Jack, though Black later claimed he had cancelled the check when he had found out New Jack would be working with Epic. During the promo, New Jack talks about why Messiah was fired. And it's a goddamn fact that the Messiah got fired because he was laying the knee down Later on that night, Messiah also came out and said, Shortly after these promos took place, XPW was hosting their pay-per-view event, Baptized in Blood 3, which would forever be known as The Beach Ball Show. Messiah had actually come to the show with Sick Nick Mondo using the free tickets that were available. When the crowd started to get rowdy, he actually left and popped into the locker room. Several people in XPW at the time confirmed that Black was livid when he found out. 11 days after the event, Messiah was sitting at home playing video games. Two guys walked in, and uh, I assumed that they were with my roommate. And I even said, hey, what's up? And they even said, hey, what's going on? When I looked at the TV, uh, I could see through the reflection of the TV, I could see them pointing like, you, you get him. No, you get him. And in the corner of my eye, I saw them lock the door. And as soon as I saw that, I got up, and that's when they jumped. During the scuffle, he saw something that caused a lot of alarm. 
They got me a chokehold, put me down, and I saw a pair of gardening shears. And I saw the gardening shears go with my thumb, and one just snap. My thumb popped right off. The men attempted to bind his hands with duct tape, which could only be assumed they were attempting to take his other thumb. He balled his hand into a fist to prevent this from happening. Messiah fought for his life, jumped up, and tried to fight off his attackers and make his way to the door. I don't know how I was able to make it to the door. And when I went to go to the door, I tried to unlock it, but I didn't have my thumb to unlock the lock. One of them got on top of me and started pulling my belt like that. Now, whether or not it was to try to cut off my penis, I don't know. Unable to get his pants off, they attempted to stab him in the groin area, stabbing his leg in the process. Messiah put up too much of a fight for them to be able to mutilate him any further. They tried to hit him with furniture to knock him out, but being unsuccessful, they fled the scene, taking his thumb with them. While it's only speculation on who orchestrated this attack, no proof of who was behind it ever surfaced, and even despite being featured on an episode of America's Most Wanted, the case has since gone cold. Messiah continued to wrestle a few days after having his thumb cut off, and continued to have a fairly successful career, and later was inducted into the CZW and SoCal Deathmatch Hall of Fame. He is now since retired. So, you might be wondering, what even happened to XPW? Unlike ECW, whose downfall is well documented by wrestling fans around the world, it seems that XPW went the way of a lot of things pre-internet culture, becoming this obscure little blip on the radar of a few niche fans who were around scouring wrestling boards in the early 2000s at the time. Well. In 2002, XPW owner Rob Black and his wife Lizzie Borden came under fire by the federal government for production and distribution of obscene materials across state lines. In a PBS Frontline documentary called American Porn, the makers of the documentary were repulsed and even walked off set during filming. Black was quoted as saying, We've got tons of stuff they technically could arrest us for. I'm not out there saying I want to be the test case, but I will be the test case. I would welcome that. I would welcome the publicity. I would welcome everything to make a point in, I guess, our society. In September of 2002, a US postal inspector joined the Extreme website, placed orders for three videotapes which were sent to a postal agent in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In April of 2003, the premises of Extreme Associates were raided by the feds and five videos were seized. In August of 2003, Black, Borden, and the company were indicted by a federal grand jury in Pittsburgh of 10 counts of the production and distribution by mail and internet of obscene pornographic material. Black and Borden both faced a max sentence of 50 years in prison, a fine of $2,500,000, or both. Extreme Associates Inc. faced a max total sentence of a term of probation of 50 years and a fine of $5 million. The prosecution also sought forfeiture of the films charged in the indictment, all gross profits from the distribution of the films, and all property used to facilitate the alleged crimes including the domain name extremeassociates.com. Black remained in business for the duration of the first trial and advertised the five tapes in question as the Federal Five, using some of the profits from sales to pay for legal fees. Now, what does this have to do with extreme pro wrestling? Due to the ongoing litigation, which would eventually lead to a dismissal and another trial, which led to an indictment in 2009, resulting in Black and Borden both serving a year and one day in prison, the promotion folded in 2003 due to the ongoing trials. Black sold the company footage in 2004 to Extreme Entertainment Group. In 2012, Black regained control and ownership of XPW and wanted XPW to make a comeback in late 2013. but. Due to insufficient backing, the project never took off again. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please let us know in the comments and make sure to like, subscribe if you're not already, and tick the notification bell.